Sandy Baru is president and CEO of the Detroit Regional Chamber. He served as head of the U.S. Small Business Administration under President George W. Bush. Sandy, welcome back to Bottom Line. Good to see you again. Good to see you, Mark. As Michael McKee just mentioned, it has been a little over a year since Detroit became the largest city in the U.S. to file for bankruptcy. The litigation aside, can you point to any strides that the city has made to get its fiscal house in order? Tremendous strides. Uh, the new mayor that was elected in November has really turned the blocking and tackling of basic government services really on its head. Some of the basics that many of our cities take for granted, uh, police service, picking up the garbage, street lights, all those things were frankly missing in action in Detroit, but now we're seeing those basic services come yeah. online. And that's in addition to the incredible private investment that has occurred over the last five years in the city. Does Sandy Sink Cora Guarantee, as Michael just mentioned, one of several bond insurers opposed to this bankruptcy plan that was outlined by the city's emergency manager, Kevin Orr. Sincora says Detroit's unfairly discriminated against financial creditors in favor of pensioners. What's your reaction to that charge, and could the entire bankruptcy process have benefited from more transparency? Well, I think the transparency has been very high. Now, if I'm Sincora or Financial Guarantee, obviously I'm not a big fan of the deal that's on the table right now, but it is certainly the very best deal that can be reached. Let's not forget that the grand bargain that your colleague just mentioned is almost a billion dollars that's being brought to the table by philanthropy, state government, and private donors that doesn't have to be there. That is completely gifted money that this deal would not have, and the reason the reason for that is because of the Detroit Institute of Art. So if the grand bargain goes away, yeah. that almost $1 billion goes off the table. Uh, Sandy, my colleague Stephen Church, he has a story on Bloomberg.com today uh, that reads, in the last decade, few big city governments in the United States leaned as heavily as Detroit did on charity for community redevelopment. Was Detroit, as Stephen writes, hooked on philanthropy? Was the lure of private money too much of a temptation? Yeah, there's two leading cities in the country that have benefited greatly from philanthropy, as your Bloomberg article mentioned. Uh, the first is San Francisco. That's a lot of new tech money. The second is Detroit. So you have two cities very different in nature, San Francisco and Detroit, that both have very generous private philanthropy. So uh, it, whatever you would say about Detroit's philanthropy, you'd have to say, say the same thing about San Francisco's. Is this process, in, in your opinion, moving along too quickly? The California cities of San Bernardino and Stockton, two much smaller municipalities, they filed for bankruptcy a year before Detroit, and those plans still haven't been finalized. Is this a question of wanting to get things done before Kevin Orr's contract as emergency manager expires at the end of this month? No, everyone here has had a real sense of urgency. The governor, the mayor, the emergency manager, Kevin Orr, the judge uh, himself has had a sense of urgency. There's no point in letting this kind of drag out like a long drawn knife. Let's use the example of uh, the auto companies uh, right here in Michigan that went through bankruptcy not too long ago. They did it quickly, they did it efficiently, and they've rebounded incredibly well. Let's use that as a template for how we handle Detroit and you know other cities that may be in a similar situation in the near future. Uh, Sandy, we have about 30 seconds left. The retirees, they're gonna get some thing out of this but as you know they were promised things before and those promises vanished are there any guarantees that they are not going to get as michael said hosed this time around well, this is obviously a federal bankruptcy proceeding. That's what this whole trial that started literally 10 minutes ago is all about. It's going to last about 45 days. That is to ensure that everyone who, if this plan of adjustment is approved, everyone gets what they are promised to get. That is why we're in court right now. Sandy Barua, he is the president and CEO of the Detroit Regional Chamber, joining us from Detroit. Sandy, always a pleasure to get your perspective. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your time.